Welcome to episode 171 of your Concealed Taco Dudes podcast. Happy New Year! How have we got 171? That's that's quite a few. That's a lot. Yeah, especially when you're the guy editing. Yeah. yeah. (laughs) Sure. Yeah, I get it. I'm just surprised that there's still two people listening. Three. There's three now? Yeah, I have listener feedback from, from at least three people. From three people. Unless it's the same guy and He's sending it from three different... changing his name to make us feel good. Yes, and it might be true. <laughs> but, I mean, we do have Bendy and... Yeah. Uh, that other guy? The other guy and the one guy and his friend. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the guy in Hawaii who sent us that oh, yeah. crazy food. Oh, yeah, and we got this... And Darren in Nebraska. Oh, yeah. Darren, Darren in Nebraska sent us hats. I'm wearing mine. Oh. It's awesome. It's a Cabela's hat. La Vista, Nebraska, which I believe is Cabela's headquarters, isn't it? Isn't that like where their big main mother store is? I'm wearing the hat, too. Yeah. It's a little big. I got to adjust it. But, but uh, yeah, these are yeah. awesome. Thanks for sending those. Thanks, Darren. Darren is our new favorite listener. Yeah, you're the favorite. <laughs> Till, till somebody else sends us something cool. Yeah. And then we'll forget who Darren was. <laughs> the the anonymous guy, he was he's my favorite for a while. He sent me the zinc. Oh yeah, yeah. The sticky zinc. The the, the honey coated zinc. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. Yeah. Honey was good. Yeah. Awesome. And the zinc, I was using it to test. Zinc was I, I used it in one of my videos, actually. It was crunchy? Uh, I didn't bite that one because oh. it was already sticky, so I didn't want to... <laughs> you just licked it? Yeah. So nice. Anyways, <clears throat> should we knock out our sponsors? Yeah, let's do. Noe bullet molds at noebulletmolds.com. Best bullet molds in the galaxy. And red dot mounts for your revolvers. Oh, I wonder if those are listed. I know. Well, when we talked to him, he sounded like he they sounded gonna... like they they were ready to go. So, and that's been a few weeks. So Al's been under the weather. <laughs> he got the bug going around. Oh god, the one that took me out for like. I don't know a month. Yeah, that one. That one was bad. I've, I've, I think everybody in my house has had something like that. Um, <clears throat> I, I got kind of a head cold that lasted twenty four hours. Oh, that's and, lucky. And, and that's the first time I've been sick since I had COVID in twenty twenty. Oh, <laughs> I haven't been sick for a while too. Yeah, and this one, I had avoided it. Like my wife got it, and yeah, you know, we slept. She slept in downstairs. You kicked her out. <laughs> and I slept upstairs. No, or maybe I slept downstairs. I can't remember. Yeah, when she was sick, she got the bed. I went downstairs. Yeah. And then when I was sick, then she went downstairs. <laughs> so huh. it's, it's that nasty cough that, like, keeps you awake and keeps yeah. everybody else awake, too. Yeah. That one, uh, brutal. We've had a couple with that, so... So, anyways, <clears throat> noebullamolds.com. Use yeah. <laughs> coupon code FLT001, and it'll save you, I think, 10%. Yep. And I was going to say, they just barely had a crazy end-of-year sale. Yeah. And so, uh, I tried to... I made a video on it. Yeah. On Instagram and everything, so if hopefully you, you guys... If you missed it, you missed it. Yeah, you missed it. Missed out on a good sale. We had bunch of, a bunch of sales and deals, too, so... And was, thank you to everybody who placed orders. I have yeah. been working my butt off. That's good. For, for weeks That's good. and weeks. But yes, it is good. I always say it's. I'd rather be too busy than looking for something to do. Yeah. <laughs> so Awesome. Uh, Black Ice Coatings. BlackIceCoatings.com. I need to go down there. I need to go too. I've got... So a year ago, I gave my daughter an AR, parts. Mm-hmm. And she was going to put it together, but I said, pick your color. Because we built an AR before... And she ended up selling it because she was going to buy a car. She still hasn't bought a car. (laughs) (laughs) Long story. Anyway, so she decided, I want another AR. Gave it to her for Christmas last year, all the parts. And I'm like, okay, what color are we dipping it? What do you want? And if... For those of you who've been listening for a while, a few years ago, I did... I built an AR for a uh, a friend, the grandma. And uh, we did it... Dipped it in red roses. And it was awesome. And my, my daughter's favorite color is red. So I'm like, hey, look at this one. We should do red roses. Oh, yeah, that's cool. 
And then I said, yeah, that was your, her best friend. It was her grandma that I built that rifle for. <laughs> yeah. And she's like, oh, I don't want the same as her. <laughs> she didn't want and a grandma so, again. <laughs> and so it's been a full year now. And I went to her, I'm like, okay, hey, you need to pick a color or I'm just going to take it down there and I'm going to pick it for you. No, no, I'll pick something. So I gave her a link w that, uh, with all the, with all the, with all the patterns and everything. And she's looking through them and, and, uh, yeah, guess what we're doing? Red roses. Like the grandma. <laughs> yeah. Like, Are you going to tease her that she has a grandma again? No. I think it's awesome. It turned out super good last time, so I'm excited. But, uh, yeah, I'll be I'll be seeing Lee here soon. Uh, plus, he's got something i got to pick up from him. But Anyway, check out Black Ice Coatings, Hydro Dipping, Teflon Coating, Sarah Coating, all that kind of stuff for your guns and anything else. He's kind of like... Like I, I had a guy call me today. I've got a really weird gun. I need a holster for. I'm like, great. That's what I do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Black well, what, ice what coatings. Was, what was a weird gun? It's a, a star. Oh, it's a, the, a Spanish military. Yeah, I know, I know what the stars are. Those pistol. are old. Yeah. And so he's he's gonna swing by later today with it. So so. But Lee's kind of the same way. If you bring something down to him that you want dipped or coated or whatever, you probably aren't gonna surprise him because he's probably done it before. Yeah. In fact. One thing that he really loves to do, he loves the hydro dip coolers, Yeti coolers. <laughs> and climbing helmets. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think he's... <laughs> he's going to kill me. <laughs> oh, man. He had one in there a year ago, I think. And I saw it before he dipped it. He's like, I, I priced it so that this woman wouldn't want to do it because I don't want to do it because it's going to be really hard. Yeah. And, and she be... didn't bat an eyelash. <laughs> she said, here's the thing. When you hydro dip something, you have, you to, have push to push it down it into the water. Well, guess what? Coolers float. Yeah. <laughs> it took multiple, I think him and his daughter, maybe both of his daughters, all of them, to force it down into the water to get it to coat. And they did it in this um, kind of a... Uh, a like I, I'm thinking ducks, duck hunting camo that has all the reeds and stuff like yeah. that. I and I went back to pick something up and he'd had it done. Dude, it looked awesome. <laughs> like, I'm like, what were you complaining about? He's like, oh man. He's like, that was so hard to do. I'm like, well, it turned out awesome. He's like, well, it did turn out good. So he can do he can do anything. Bring, yeah, he really likes the stuff that floats a lot and yeah. it's hard to push underwater. Yeah. So, bring bring your Volkswagen you bug down and tell if you have you something dip. like that. <laughs> <laughs> Take it to Black Ice Cody's. Yeah. Anyway, call them up and tell them you want it slickery. Yeah. You tell air guns. Well, I was gonna oh. say too. Uh, nobody has responded on how they think I should get uh -huh. my 300 blackout break action done. Everybody's been too busy celebrating the holidays. I know. To give New us year any of their and time. Like Christmas. So if you have a cool idea. Let me know, because I... I say you just take it to him and say... Just, go nuts. Just do what you want. I mean, I do own a hot pink piggy. Yeah. Like, uh, hog hunter, so... Uh -huh. And yeah. people love it. Yeah. They're like, hey, can I shoot the piggy gun? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> awesome. Okay, Utah Air Guns. UtahAirGuns.com. Weirdest thing, just before Christmas, I was selling the crap out of the Air Force air gun stocks that I make. Mm-hmm. Which, I would do one every now and then. I think I sold eight of them in, like, three weeks. And one guy, I was communicating with him, I think he was asking for a color I was out of stock in or something. Anyway, so we were talking a little bit, and I said, so, I'm like, how did you even hear about these, you know? Yeah. And and he's like, oh, he's like, I run a custom gun shop. I make custom guns and stuff down here in Texas, and... Bunch of my customers were telling me they invited me on this deer hunt and hog hunt with our air guns, and they were telling me about your stock. And so I, you know, can you get it to me by this time? I'm like, yeah, I'll get it to you. <laughs> so I don't know if there's a forum out there or something that went hot, but makes yeah. me happy. That's one yeah. of the products I'm super happy with. And and Utah Air Guns has been ordering a bunch too. So anyway, Utah Air Guns, awesome air guns and air gun accessories for. Anything that you... Yeah, and they sell want. everything like scopes, yeah, optics, yep, thermal imaging, you know. Yeah, and I think they're the biggest night force dealer in the country, which is crazy to think that the air gun store is, selling is the that. number one yeah. seller for, for I that. believe it. I do too. 
I have a nice scope on mine. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's it, just crazy. The gun you shoot the most, you want to have the best optics on. Yep. Whether it's a air gun or a real gun. Yep. So go check out Utah Air Guns at utahairguns.com. When you buy and order online, use the coupon code AIRCANDY. You get free shipping and free turret stickers. Yeah. Magholder at magholder.com. Horizontal mag carriers. Best mag carriers ever. Yeah. They're really, really awesome. And he's got lots of other stuff and swag and things like that on his website, too, that you might want to check out. Use the code Get in the van, I have candy, and you'll save, I think, 10% or something like that. I don't remember what it's it like is. 20-something. It changes all the time. Yeah. I don't think, it was, it was, when Mark owned the business. It was like 22. It was crazy. It's like 22 and a half. I don't think it's that deep anymore. Yeah. But you're still saving money. Try it on, out. On a great product. Yeah. Concealment Solutions at concealmentsolutions.com. Your one-stop holster shop. Now, we have some exciting things going on. What do you got going on? I don't remember if I mentioned this last time. I've been talking about moving again for a long time. Work things out with my landlord. If you've been to the shop, you know that the parking lot's a nightmare because of a car dealership that's next to me. Mm -hmm. Their lease is done this month. And if he does sign any other car dealerships in this place, he has promised that they will not be allowed to have it more than three cars. Huh. And if he's, and he told me he's like, if they, if a fourth car shows up, they're done. Because he's sick of these people, too. So, parking lot's going to get easier. Plus, I added some space to my shop that is being turned into a showroom. So we're going to have a Got new, mannequins. new entrance once it's all up in, in place. It's actually I had to rip out a bunch of built-in shelving and redo sheetrock and wire in new lights and it's getting painted right now as we speak so i've been collecting fixtures and mannequins and hopefully it's going to be super cool like people are going to want to come check it out because you're going to walk in and there's going to be mannequins and dudes set up that are all decked out in gear um the knives that i've been selling forever will all have a home (laughs) and be displayed nicely i am looking at bringing on a lot of other um product as well over time so So my real question is uh you know being up with today's lingo and everything do you have mannequins and do you have wool mannequins no (laughs) whoa mannequins (laughs) i have i have manny who is about six foot very fit mannequin (laughs) and i ordered him a beard too oh nice (laughs) and he's got some terminator sunglasses He's going to be awesome. I've got a couple of torsos, so I guess they're still male or female. They're male torsos. And then I got, and if you follow me on social media, you've seen this one. It's a little boy, (laughs) and he freaks everyone out because he's got his head tipped back and his arms are kind of open, and his mouth is wide open like he's screaming. Oh, jeez. He's kind of creepy. He was made in the 40s. He's actually an antique mannequin Mannequin. (laughs) i think he's awesome but everybody that walks in the shop and sees it they're like oh what is that creepy thing his name's scotty he's not creepy (laughs) you gotta get an artist to like paint eyes and stuff he has it yeah yeah it's like it's yeah he's got he's got hair molded hair that's different color that his colors have kind of faded a little bit because he's so old but uh yeah, Scotty's awesome. And he's he's got a t-shirt on that says, I study trigonometry. Nice. <laughs> with, with the uh, the guns flag thing on it. And anyway, Manny's sporting a uh, FX air guns shirt. Because oh, sweet. Because I've been, I, I raided my son's closet because he fits. <laughs> <laughs> he fits the, the, the man. son's clothes. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. And I'm like, dude, I've never seen you wear this shirt. Yeah, it doesn't fit right. Okay, I'm taking it. <laughs> hmm. So, anyway, I'm really excited. I, I Before I started this business, I spent 25 years in retail. And so that's kind of home for me. And I've been wanting to do something like this for many years and just haven't had the space to do it. So I finally yeah. got a spot. It's, it's tiny, but it, it's going to serve the purpose. And looking to add um, other products like tactical lights and flashlights and some things like that it, but it's just gonna over time i will add to what we carry but in the meantime you'll be able to come in and check out stuff in 
how it's used and, and things like that. So it'll be fun. It'll be cool. And there, I'll make a... We'll probably, in the springtime, I'll probably do a big open house thing like I've done in the yeah, past. Yeah, that'd be and, cool. And uh, yeah, about four people in that showroom and it will be crowded. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But that's okay. So... Anyway, that's what's going on at uh, Concealment Solutions. When you place an order with us online, or if you call me to place an order, use the code "Show Me the Candy" and you'll save fifteen percent. Awesome! So, awesome! All right, we we've got, got a, some listener feedback. Yeah, I was gonna say we got a little bit of listener feedback, and so we will go with that. First one is from Nate D. Nady. Nady, <laughs> and he says, "Hello, Concealed Taco Dudes." It is that time of year to talk about this year's net gun purchase. Oh. Here is mine. Okay. That might be a fun episode. I don't, I'll have to see if I um, can do that one. The ATF might be <laughs> listening with how many I've like bought and sold. Sometimes you, you buy them because you want to try them out. Yeah. And then... And they're disappointing. They're disappointing. <laughs> like that, that Keltec. That Keltec. Dude, I could have I could have told you that. Oh, I know. Be I just in your mind you think they're cool though. They are cool, and in your mind you think, oh yeah, this would be cool, and it was a good price. And so, not yeah. to get off the subject, but have you seen Keltec's new Sub Two Thousand Gen Three? I've not, it, but I'm. <laughs> it looks exactly the same. But the biggest problem with the Sub Two Thousand, I know you hate them. The I, little clip on the end that knocks my earmuffs. No. <laughs> When you fold it back, if if you have an optic on oh, it, yeah, it won't it fold. Yeah. They've solved that. You would think they would just make it side fold, like Smith and Wesson's rip off of the sub two thousand. Yeah, which was which was smart, but they didn't. It still folds up, but when it folds up, it twists. And yeah, it's crazy. That's nuts. And so they're, they're kind of cool. But it looks exactly the same. It's got a little the same stock, everything, four handles the same, but it's got this pivot in there. So it folds up and then turns sideways and locks on sideways so your optic clears. Anyway. All right. So this is his list. <laughs> okay. The first uh, part is his the ones he sold. Okay. Smith & Wesson Shield. Okay. And then it was a Gen... Oh, Cut off or something. Gen 1. And David Davidson Defense AR-15 16-inch and 300 blackout. Okay. High point 9mm carbine. Okay. Beretta Neos 22 long rifle. The Neos is that little weird-looking one with the rail on top. Oh. So far, I can understand why you've sold yeah, all these. Yeah, I'd say... Davidson, that's a nice AR, but... Yeah, it depends on but that. It's, but it's an they, AR they sell good and... stuff, and they sell bad stuff. Yeah. So it depends on what stuff well, it was built yeah. with. Yeah. The Chinese stuff uses like a softer aluminum. That's why I just prefer to build them myself. I yeah. know what I'm getting. Anyways, so I would probably agree with selling all those things that he sold. Yeah. Then the new guns. Thompson Center Contender with a four forty five Super Mag, forty four Magnum, and twenty two long rifle barrels. Huh. Okay. Contenders, Encores, those are always a cool... Yeah platform you could do a pistol or rifle or yeah sbr yeah and i think some of them you can even get shotgun barrels so it's clearly like, he's been listening too much to you yeah <laughs> but that that'll be a fun one yeah and you can get multiple you know, barrels multiple, they're stuff. kind of expensive but you can yeah. still find them at sometimes used like relatively inexpensive if the yeah. people are just want to get rid of them you know sure so also the smith and wesson shield plus after selling my Shield 1, but registered Shield it, Plus. so I had to replace it. So, oh, okay. It must be in California. California or yeah, Chicago. <laughs> Chinese SKS. Those are cool. Yeah. You like the Yugos. The Yugos, I think, are a little little finer. It's like a, but, a blade versus the pig sticker. Yeah. But uh, And then next is a Uberti 1873 Lever Action 357 Mag. Nice. That'll be a, that's a fun one. That's... Or it should be a fun one. The 73 action is kind of weird, though, to me. It's kind of got a little springy. I don't know. If you if you shoot a bunch of lever actions, you don't yeah. know what I'm talking about. It's yeah. just, it feels different than, like, the 18... Well, so you have your 90... Bre uh, not the... Bre 92. The, the 92s, Winchester 92s. Right. And uh, Rossi 92s. Uh -huh. And then you have your, your Marlins and uh, the... Um, 
Anyways, Marlins the 73s, are tough to get your hands on now, and when you can, they're stupid expensive. Yeah. Although Ruger is planning on releasing some of the the, the smaller caliber ones, like the 357. Oh, stuff. good. So that's what I'd like is a 357. Yeah, threaded 357. Yeah. So all right, a Ruger 1022. Nice. That would make Jason proud. I'm a fan. Taurus Raging Bull and 454 Casul. Okay. That's like yeah. That's that's uh, a. It's a one that blows up milk milk jugs really good. Yeah. And uh, if you have a bear, you know, yeah. charging you, it, that's, that's a, great that's for a good, that. Good bear gun. And uh, then he says, now it's your turn, guys. What have you bought and sold? I think I'm going to try for a net two new guns for 2024 and see what happens. Keep up the great work. So there's probably not enough time in this podcast no. to talk about all of the... And I'd have to, I'd have to open the safe and I don't... I don't keep track like some of you guys yeah. do. <laughs> so I have a spreadsheet. I keep track of it. Yeah. But I need to like update it because there's a lot of yeah shuffling at the end of the year. Yeah. And so we'll we'll save we'll save ours for another episode. A different episode. Yeah. yeah. Or I guess what were your highlights of selling and buying? What did you sell that you're glad about selling or that pained you? Uh, the only thing I can think of that I sold last year was my muzzle loader. I don't think I sold anything else, hmm. which is weird for me. Yeah, that is. You you uh, usually turn go over through. guns like quite a bit. Yeah. I I sold Oh, I sold I sold my high point 10 mm. Oh yeah. Uh, carbine. Cuz you never shot it. No, I did shoot it. I shot it a few I like didn't, once or I twice. didn't own it for very long. Yeah. It just made me sad every time I saw it in the safe cuz it was so ugly. Yeah. It's <laughs> like, "Oh, I feel dirty. <laughs> yeah, you you want to know something funny? It's huh. like I ended up selling mine too. Oh, did you? Even with this the space uh, really chassis. I and never everything. even got to see it. Oh, I know with its new clothes. It just I was I had to do some win, like spring cleaning, but winter cleaning, yeah, or fall cleanup or uh-huh. whatever. Where I was just looking at guns I hadn't shot, yeah, ever and hadn't shot in a long time. And yeah, I'm like okay, those go on the chopping block first. Yeah. And if they had some sort of sentimental sentimental value, value or yeah. historical value, then they were saved. But the ones that didn't have anything, yeah. Then I was see, like, that's oh. my my problem is most of my stuff I don't really get sentimental with. You know, and I have that that Chris. Uh, I guess it's a pistol. Yeah, the forty five. Well, I have it in ten millimeter. Oh, okay. And so it's like, uh, and you know, I I haven't even shot that very much. Huh. And. I liked it when I shot it. It's just, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I, I, maybe I need to take it out more. Do you shoot, is it because of the caliber? Do you not shoot 10 I millimeter? I like shooting 10 millimeter. Yeah, but do you shoot it regularly? Uh, I guess when I just get a flare for, you yeah. know. I try not to shoot 10 millimeter when other people are bringing their 10 millimeters. Yeah. Because then the brass, you know. Yeah, if and, people are fighting over the brass. Yeah, it's like, uh, I like to keep my 10 millimeter. Yeah, but, 10 millimeter brass is... So uh, if no one's bringing yeah. their 10 millimeter, then I'm more uh, likely to, to bring mine. Or if I'm taking a group shooting and they're like, oh, I want to shoot that gun. It looks like a space gun. Yeah. But, yeah. Huh. So I, I sold that one. I sold some other stuff that would just... Anyway, we were yeah. saving this for yeah, another yeah, episode. Yeah, yeah. yeah so... <laughs> Anyways, all right. The other message we got was from Jim Heffelfelfelfelfinger. Oh. And he sent his uh, digital Christmas card. Oh, yeah. I did did see that. Did you get that and read it? I did. Yeah, it looks like his family's doing good. And, uh, you know, with the hunting and all the wilderness stuff that they like to do. Yeah. Um, In Arizona, I believe, right? Yep. Yeah. And uh, anyways, and he says, hope you had a Merry Christmas, Feliz Navidad, Happy Hanukkah. Jim Heffelfinger and family. Nice. Then we have one from Sig. I don't know who that is. Maybe it's his initials. It is. Like Stuart. Why wouldn't it be from Sig themselves? Well, oh yeah, maybe it is. I'm sure it is. Yeah, I'm sure I'm that... I'm certain. Yeah. Sig the company just sent us... <laughs> they, they listen to the podcast, uh, and that's their company meetings. I'm yeah, sure. so, so here's what he says. Dudes, as a native Ohioan, your first news story was painful to listen to. Meyer, pronounced Meyer, the one that you said major, <laughs> whatever. What? Was this on the last episode? Yeah, it's oh. M-E-I-J-E-R. <laughs> oh, He's yeah. He's like, Meyer. 
So it is a regional grocery department store, like Walmart, but more fancy. (laughs) Why is there a J in there? (laughs) Don't Uh, put letters in if you're not going to pronounce them. (laughs) They don't serve a purpose. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, that's English. But Yeah, no kidding. I spent a short time as an Uber and Lyft driver. I did it part-time to stay busy on my off days, so I wasn't relying on it to feed my family. I carried a flashlight, knife, and gun every day. I knew what the policy was, and my safety will always be more important than their policy. Nice. Keep up the great work. Don't fret about the almost weekly timeline. Every episode is worth all the money I pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> With the laughy emoji. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay, and then here's another one. Uh, this one's from Wes Smith, and he says, Meyer is a chain of grocery supermarket stores, like a Walmart, pronounced like Meyer. <laughs> like... <laughs> Oscar Mayer Wiener. Okay. Good, good yeah. to know. That'll, so. that'll help us in the future when that comes up again. Yeah, and it I was going to say, will. I was going to say, we have received a couple of the demanded uh, listener feedbacks. <laughs> we need more. Apparently, they didn't understand that it was a demand. It was a demand from Jason. It wasn't, it wasn't you know, do this in your spare time. Or out of the goodness of like your it. heart. No. It was this demand. is your homework, and you have to do it. Just like your homework when you were in school. You have to do it. So, send us some cool gun purchase stories. Like, Whether stories of how you got something a good deal. You or scored a sweet deal. Or got something rare out of some crazy... Something unusual. Whatever. Yeah. Which, since we're talking about it, before we get into what we did with guns and a news story, I have a gun here that a customer brought in. I'm making a holster for it. Um, But I wanted to bring it in because I knew you would appreciate it. This is probably the oldest gun I've ever made a holster for. It's... I don't even know what model it is. It's a Smith & Wesson revolver. It's a brake top. I was going to say, it looks like a brake top. It is a brake top. 38. Not 38 special. But 38. Just 38. Yeah. Um, He has been doing some research on it. The serial number... It is. It was manufactured somewhere between 1880 and 1889. And he wants a holster for it. Yes. <laughs> and he's, is he going to carry it? It's going to be kind of like a barbecue gun. Yeah. Oh, okay. But what's cool about it is it's hammerless and it has a grip safety. Oh, weird. They have. They refer to the it, grip safety's on on the back. Yeah, like a 1911. Like a 1911. Yeah. They they sometimes a nickname for that model of gun is called the lemon squeezer <laughs> <laughs> oh geez that's crazy and it 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 would appear that the barrel has been cut down i'm pretty sure that that was probably originally closer to a four inch barrel and it, which is a little disappointing but at the same time that's part of the history of that gun so it's got like a what a two inch barrel on it now so somebody cut it down to make it a pocket gun yeah which makes perfect sense you know for what it is. That's cool. But yeah, it's it's pretty cool. And this guy... Did he say how he got it? He frequents pawn shops. Okay. Yeah. I was going to say, pawn shops, you can sometimes find weird yes. crap. Like, and he and he has picked up some weird stuff that he has brought to me. He brought me a... Uh, it was a Beretta. Um, I think it was a Beretta Bobcat, like that one that I got. Mm-hmm. But it had like a four-inch barrel on it. Just this... A Everything tiny- about it was exactly like mine, little snubby one, but it had this big, long, skinny barrel extending out the front of it. It was hmm. the weirdest looking thing. I made him a holster for that one, too. That's awesome. So Sometimes it's really cool to have holsters for just weird yeah, guns. I agree. Like that. I've got one for my Ruger Mark II with a 10-inch barrel. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, that gun is what gave birth to my drop leg holster. Yeah, I was gonna say that I I the proto I still have the prototype. I put it together in literally about thirty minutes because I was it was the end of the day. I was going bunny hunting the next day, and I just got the gun. And I'm like, this is my side something. on. How am I gonna carry this? How am I gonna draw it? And I this idea just came to me. Put it together, worked awesome, and then I just refined it a little bit and beefed it up. And and now we have my, drop leg holsters for my five hundred Smith and Wesson. <laughs> it's one of my best selling holsters. So, yeah. well, those are like, those are kind of nice for when you're out and about. Yeah. 
and you need you want it, it especially it in puts the winter the, time because it keep it drops it down yes. below your coat. And so it's it's nice where it's right where your hand is. Yeah, and it's a very natural draw. Yeah, yeah, moves and with it pivots you. with you. Yeah, so they're they're pretty slick. So anyway, send us your stories of how you acquired like whatever cool gun. guns or guns cheap. I'm gonna give you a quick story. This would be awesome if you have a story like this. This isn't even a gun purchase story. This is my father-in-law's story. He has his dad's Winchester ninety. Is it a 92? That, that's like the classic Winchester. Or is it a 94? Uh, 92. Lever action. Yeah. It's a 92. Yeah. Okay. He has his dad's in in um, 30-30. Okay. How he got it, his older brother... Well, if it's a if it's a 30-30, it's, it's probably not a 92. It, what is it then? Uh, it's a lever action. Yeah. I forget. I don't love the, the 30-30, so... I know. But I think know. it's a... It's a 94? I think it's a 94. Yeah. Winchester 94. That's what I had in my head, but when you were talking about 92 earlier, it confused me. Anyway. Yeah. So his older brother, his, so his dad passed away when he was very little. He was, I don't, I think he was eight or nine or something. Anyway, his older brother ends up with the gun because he was older when, when dad died and everything. My father-in-law's in college. He lives just down the street from his brother. And his brother's son used to come down all the time, knock on the door. Can Wally come out and play? <laughs> you know, his nephew. And so one day, he's his nephew's over and he's talking to him. He says, "Hey, you know that gun that your dad has? And he just, uh, the lever action." This, and he's like, "Yeah." He's like, "Do you know where it is?" He's like, "Yeah." Will you go get it and bring it to me? <laughs> so he's. His nephew runs back home, and it's in the leather scabbard that his dad carried on the on his horse. The gun's amazing. Tons of patina. Really cool. Anyway, yeah, his when his brother realized what had happened, he got upset and protested, and my father-in-law's response was, you've got plenty of guns. He's like, I don't have any, so I need something to protect my family, and I'm keeping it. <laughs> <laughs> So, so he swindled. He his... swindled it from his brother, <laughs> and, what, and oh, the reason man. I found out about it is we were at a family reunion or a Christmas party or something, and his brother said something about. It. I'm like, wait, I need to hear this story. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. So if you have a story like that, we would love to hear it. Yeah. All right. Let's jump into a news story, and then we will we'll, we can hit what we did with guns, and that'll probably eat up our time. Okay. <clears throat> Just before 7 p.m. Tuesday night, police were called to a neighborhood near 38th and Post after a homeowner reported a masked man forced his way into the home during an attempted robbery. This is the the homeowner. He smacked me in the head with a gun and told me I... I knew what it was, and then yelled out. Then I yelled out, "He's trying to rob me." I, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but yeah, Brent Smith. That's the the victim here. Brent Smith claims he then quickly began to fight with the would be thief, and the pair crashed through a glass table inside his home. Oh, jeez. And I was thinking this, and then I read the next line. It was like a movie. <laughs> <laughs> Me and him wrestling over the gun. During the struggle, Smith admits he shot the intruder with the suspect's own gun. Uh, Damon Swanigan Jr., 22, died on the front step of the home, which was then hit by a barrage of bullets from outside. That gunfire damaged the siding, the front door, and shattered the windows of a car parked in the street. I saw the video of it. It looked like a uh, mass drive-by or or a, a war zone. I mean, the car, all the windows were shot out. Holes in the car, the siding and everything Wait, was so all what, full of holes. What happened? Like, so... <laughs> When the gun gun when the gun went off, I heard thousands of gunshots. So twenty. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> said Smith. It was a lot of gunfire, man. A lot of gunfire. Smith said during the sh that shootout, he grabbed his own gun and returned fire before the suspects in the street drove away, leaving behind a pile of broken car glass. I didn't even think 
think them or me. I was just basically trying to survive myself, man. Police question Smith overnight. And I love how this is. you can tell the attitude of the people writing these stories. Police question Smith overnight. But because the law allows people to defend themselves, their home, with deadly force, he was released pending further investigation. <laughs> maybe, maybe I added So who tone, are the people in the car? They don't know. The next... The car was just parked on the street. It wasn't... It wasn't... But when they heard gunshots in the house... They just opened fire. They just opened fire? Yeah. What the... Yeah. The next morning, Smith remained emotional, thinking about the life he had taken. That doesn't make no sense, man. I didn't want to do that. I don't know... I don't know... I didn't know his intention, but I didn't want to be shot. That's just all there is to it. Um, police don't have any information on the people who fled the scene. Sounds gang-related, <clears throat> if I were to guess. It kind of does. Like, an, in, an initiation where it's like, hey, you gotta go in and, you know... Yeah. And then they hear a gunshot, and they're like, "Oh crap! Let's just make sure everyone dies." Maybe I don't know or something. It was it was interesting, and I don't know. I didn't catch what city it was in. Thirty eighth and Post <laughs> sounds like a bigger city, but yeah, yeah, it's kind of crazy. But yeah, wrestled the gun away from the bad guy and killed. I mean, him with it his doesn't sound gun. like it's a bunch of rednecks in a pickup truck, right? No, it sounds no. like it. It sounds more like gangbangers. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, thought that was an interesting one to share. So, should we jump into what we did with guns? Yes. Okay. Would you like me to start? Yes. Okay. I will start. <laughs> so, I, I shared uh, with the, the story about my daughter's AR, so we'll be taking that down to, to Lee to get, uh, get spruced up before we put it all back together and take it out shooting. Um, I... I've gone to the range, I think, twice to shoot. I, I bought two uh, Bushnell red dots on on Palmetto's deals. They were sixty bucks, and I and I need one for my uh, for my ten twenty two takedown. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, that's the perfect <laughs> that's perfect for that gun. Yeah. You know, I don't need anything crazy for it. And I put the other one on my uh, Keltec, my sub two thousand. And so I was, went down there to go sight them in and everything, and it was, I think it was, it might have been a holiday weekend, I don't remember, but it was crowded, and I was like, I'm not going to go, I hate indoor ranges anyway, mm -hmm. and and when there's, and I was talking, to, I was dropping off a holster for the store that uh, has the range, and I was talking to the manager, and I was, he's like, oh, are you going you gonna to shoot? And I looked at their monitor, I'm like, there's more than one person on the range, so no. <laughs> if, if there's one or two people out there, no big deal. I don't care, but yeah, you get three or four lanes, and there's two or three people in each lane, you know, sharing yeah, a lane, and it's, it's like, nah, I'll come back. But, well, did I tell you about my friends who went shooting? Uh-uh. They go, you know, and they they ended up leaving early. Yeah. But guess what gun was someone was shooting in there? At the indoor at, range. At the indoor range? Yeah. What, like a 50 BNG? Exactly. Yeah. And so they said that even though the gun was like lanes over, yeah, it, it the concussion was so big Oh yeah. that it just, they're like... If you're standing behind it, it's obnoxious. It's okay. If you're to the but side yeah, of to it, the it's side, horrid. It's, yeah. So anyways, they, 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 they just, they left... They but, shouldn't allow other people on the range when somebody's shooting that. I know which range it was. Yeah, and, yeah, exactly. Uh, but so they went yeah. there because they just got some new guns and they, yeah. they're excited to test them out. And then so they went to the indoor range because it's close. Yeah. And they they said they had to leave or they just left. Yeah. It was is too too concussive. Oh, Probably yeah. like destroy your it's internal like yeah eardrum thingy, yeah. my bobbers. So well, when they when they first built that range and they built it specifically so they could shoot 50 in there, mm -hmm. which I'm like, why? Are you, I don't understand why you want to shoot a 50 inside anyway. Because you get people who have never shot. Right. They just before. want to experience they want the to shoot the video game and, like 50 right. cal. See the big flame out the front and whatever. And I, they just need to, you know, and they they 
shop probably charges like 10 bucks a shot or something. And I so, bet it's more than that because the, the, the cartridge is almost that much. Yeah. So, I, I mean, yeah. it, it gives them that opportunity right. to like. Right. But when they built that. that range, the first time they fired the 50 in there, it blew out all the light bulbs. Oh, geez. In the, in the range. So I don't know what they did to fix that. Probably used LEDs or something. Maybe. I don't know. Right. But yeah. First shot, boom, every All light blew out. out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyways. So so anyway, I picked up those red dots. I I actually I caved and I bought a um, a dagger lower. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I I I couldn't justify buying another complete gun, but I was thinking, I've got this polymer eighty that I built years ago that was kind of botched because the drill busted. Yeah. And it, messed up the hole and it just hasn't been very reliable and i just don't like polymer 80s don't feel good if people complain about glock feeling like a two by four in their hand well hold on to a polymer 80 because that's exactly what it is there's no contours yeah. well i just it depends on which brand you get because there's multiple companies out well, there i'm talking there's about the brand polymer the, pol 80. the p80 polymer yeah. 80 yeah. yeah there's ones a couple that my friends and i did and they were the strike 80s okay and it's strike industries and yeah. like AR parts and stuff. Right. And that one actually ergonomically felt really good. Yeah. It's just, I don't know. Anyway. The dagger. I'm it, like, I've got this gun that I don't even care to ever shoot. And so I've just bought a dagger lower. In fact, Lee's well, got it. I got to go pick it up. When you can buy a complete dagger lower for cheaper than like the kit. An 80 polymer Just 80 the kit, kit without, without the With nothing the else. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was 49 bucks. Yeah. yeah, and and so as soon as I pick it up, I'm just going to pop the slide off that polymer 80, and I will have a complete gun <laughs> for that dagger. Yeah. It, but I get, I did get the compact this time instead okay. of the full size. So you got one but of each? What I'm Do you, did you keep your other one? So you have, oh, yeah. You have both? Yeah. What I've really been waiting for is the their... The slide? <laughs> no, well, that too. Their micro, which is, from what I can tell, it's kind of like a Glock 48. Mm -hmm. but it comes with 15 round magazines they have they're not none of them are available and they haven't been for months yeah and i wonder if there might be a legal issue oh because it's too new of a gun and it's too similar yeah i that's what i'm thinking i've noticed that they sell the magazines for them yeah which i think maybe they're in a situation where like we can't sell these guns we might as well see if we can sell some of these magazines to the handful of people that already got them I don't know, but that's, I really want one of those. So yeah, they're, they're micro. I would really like to get my hands on yeah, one. I would too. Like that, would, that seems like that would be a really cool Especially when gun. it comes with 15 round mags. And their lifetime warranty. Yeah. Like people don't, people forget about that. Palmetto yeah. gives like lifetime warranty on their stuff. Yeah. So. But uh, I will probably take the trigger out of the polymer 80 and put it into the. What trigger did the, you put in? It's just a stock uh, Glock trigger. The only thing I don't like about the polymer, the the dagger triggers, mm -hmm. is it's hinged. The, the yeah, safety yeah, is hinged. It's, it's like the Smith and Wesson yeah. hinge. Yeah, and they just they just feel spongy. It's not a bad trigger pull. I, it's okay. Man, I but, actually like it. Yeah, it's. I don't like the Smith and Wessons. I don't either. But the the dagger trigger to me feels better. Yeah. Than the stock Glock and better than the Smith and Wesson. See, so, I don't. I and I maybe think... it's maybe it's like a little bit is like uh, unique, right? Like yeah. Each trigger is a little bit different. Yeah. Well, like Stan's trigger is weird. Stan's felt different than both of ours did. Yeah. Mine has broken in pretty nicely, and yeah. so you've I got just, more. You've got more rounds. I just like than yours. Than yeah. I, I have over a thousand us. rounds for mine. Yeah. And it probably needs to be cleaned. Yeah. <laughs> and it keeps it keeps on rocking. Yeah. Like it, it, I don't know. Maybe I clean it when it stops. Yeah. Or, but or something. Anyways, I've already, no, I've I, already got the trigger, so I might as well put it in. And I don't like to put... Most of my guns, most of my handguns, have a self-defense purpose for them. And so I'm not the type that... I'm not going to put a three-pound trigger in one of my handguns just because well, I, I don't want yeah, it for that. Yeah, just... If I ever build a race gun... Sure, and mm -hmm. that's all it'll do, you know. It'll yeah. just be a range gun, but none of my stuff is just range stuff. What the thing that I have a problem with is, uh, seems like with rifles you can put in crazy nice triggers, right? And you don't get like light strikes. 
Yeah. It seems like with handguns, and granted, there's lots of different handguns, right. lots of whatever. But even with like revolvers and stuff, mm -hmm. it seems like when people start working the trigger, so it's like race gun style uh -huh. or whatever, like quick draw, uh -huh. <laughs> then you sometimes you get issues. like you get light strikes or, or they you get picky. Auto. I've not had that, but I've witnessed it. Oh. Not like, not for me, but I yeah, was at an IDPA yeah, yeah. match, and one and of the guys somebody, in my squad, he had a it was a Glock that was all tricked out and everything, and, and he was an older guy, yeah, and it started multi multiple rounds. Oh jeez, the trigger when he was like, "Okay, this gun's done," and I'm like, yeah. "Dude, you'll clear that rack faster." <laughs> He's like, "Nope, this isn't safe. I'm not shooting it." Yeah, you know, because you know. You're trying to you're you, you're walking you want, a thin line, yeah, and yeah. if you if you just go too far, you know, yeah, then it then, then it does it. does crazy things. So yeah, so for me, I I'd, I'd rather have I need it to be reliable, right? Because that drives me crazier than like a really hard trigger pull, right? I can deal with a hard trigger pull, right? It sucks, but if I pull the trigger and it doesn't go bang, right. that makes me mad. Yeah, like when it comes to guns, like yep. Because guns should always go bang. Right. Anyways. I agree. Rant I over. Agree. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is, that's about all. I I know there was a lot of other stuff I can't remember. All right. My week's been So I've been, nuts. I've been uh, busy making ammo like usual, yeah. you know. And one of the funny things was, is I, I actually had to buy some factory ammo. Oh. I felt so guilty. I felt <laughs> dirty. Feel dirty? Yeah, you I felt dirty. come home and take a shower. I'm like, how is it that I spent this much money on like five boxes of ammo like what did you buy it was 22 250 ammo oh, okay because i couldn't get brass anywhere oh and it was so really i ordered just, it from an online yeah. place and they they like send me an email oh sorry it's our inventory is messed up or something yeah and we have to cancel your order and i'm like oh crap you know so basically you just bought really expensive brass uh yeah <laughs> and you know i figured cite it in right yeah so I bought a, a hundred rounds of twenty two two fifty, and that was to go along with a new purchase. Uh, yeah. I don't I don't know why I do it sometimes. It's late the late at night stuff. That, Nobody does. Yeah, <laughs> but I made a, a couple orders at Bear Creek. Okay. You know, and I uh, like Bear Creek. They it's it's kind of funny. They they get pooped on quite a bit. Yeah. Because you it's, know it's just when like you it, are the kind of the bottom dollar builder. Yeah or manufacturer then you know <laughs> there's stuff is gonna there's cheaper stuff out there oh yes but like one of the brands mentioned before yeah but you it's so, just like anything else any any shop that is selling ar parts in mass mm -hmm. you have to be you have to be a little picky you have to look hard at what you're buying yeah so what i bought was they have an AR-10 upper that's chambered in twenty-two two fifty. Okay. And I was like, that sounds fun. Yeah. Especially to, like, blow up some vermin. Yeah. You know, come spring. Uh-huh. And so, you know, I just kind of set that aside. But then I, I was able to, like, I was watching the uppers. Uh-huh. And then they dropped the price for, like, you know, Christmas and stuff. Uh-huh. And then they had a thing where if you sign up for text notifications, yeah. it's, like, 10% off. Uh-huh. So I ended up getting a couple uppers nice. and a couple lowers. And in it was twenty two two fifty? Well one uppers? one was twenty two two fifty, the other's three oh eight, like okay. a longer barrel three oh eight. Okay. And they're both side chargers. And I will say I, I think love side one chargers. of the ways that Bear Creek keeps their cost down uh -huh. is they don't offer like a ton of options with their four ends. Yeah. So the handguards four ends. Yeah. They are all the same exact style. Yeah. And it's not a bad style. No. It's, it's perfectly oh, serviceable. Yes. Works great. and it's Not the fanciest looking, but they're not hideous. Yeah. And the side chargers are really nice if you have scopes on your guns. I, I've building, been building AR side chargers. That's all I've built for the last forever. Because even without a scope, even if you're running a red dot or if you're running in regular open sights, I just prefer the side charging action to that slingshot yeah, the, charge handle. Well, and if you have a scope on it, then you got to slide your hand under yep. the, yeah, the lens. Sure. Yeah. And, and the the Bear Creek, I've actually built, I think, three or four 
uh, ARs with the uh, Bear Creek upper side charge. And yeah. I have never had an issue with any of them. The they're reciprocating, which yeah. a lot of people are like really poo poo. It's like what, side what is going that to reciprocate? Like yeah, I don't. It's not a big deal. I have to me. I, it's like an AK. Like, yeah, it's actually that's one of it's, the reasons I like it. It's shaped like the AK yep. charging, same you know charger, and 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 it works as and a deflector it recipro- too. Yeah, <laughs> it reciprocates too, and every. I don't know. I, I like see, them. So and for me, where I shoot left, having that, that comes right back towards your face. Mm-hmm. And so I can see that as being a problem. But I've built left side chargers without an issue. I have a Gibbs upper on on my AR that I, that I shoot that uh, is non-reciprocating. And it is nicer. Mm-hmm. But you can pick up, I think, I've, I think I've seen there... A, a side charge upper with the bolt carrier group for like a hundred bucks or maybe a little bit more but yeah I think it, usually when they come with the bolt carrier group they cost more than a hundred but, but they but they're, they're but pretty they're inexpensive very inexpensive the other thing too is that they are I believe it's made in the USA yeah and it is has a lifetime guarantee yeah I mean as long as you trust Bear Creek to be around yeah. So they've been around for a while. They've been around time. for a while. So Yeah. So anyways, got those. They even survived. Palmetto had like an AR ten <laughs> complete. Won't say it. <laughs> yeah. Palmetto had a AR ten on a uh, lower, complete lower with yeah. magpole furniture and stuff. Nice. And that was like two hundred bucks. Yeah. Complete they've lower. They've had some crazy deals. I And so <sighs> I ended up picking up one of those. And here is an interesting note on the different AR lowers and uppers and compatibility. Mm-hmm. So I have, like I've, I've used the Aero Precision, the big, you know, AR-10 ones, and then uh-huh. Bear Creek and Palmetto. Uh-huh. The Palmetto lowers do not work with, like, the Aero uppers and the Bear Creek oh, interesting. uppers. But I was able to snap my arrow upper on the bear creek lower okay and so anyway just kind of that's interesting yeah they, they should be pretty universal but yeah. they say they're patterned after the dpms like original like uh-huh. design and you know yeah but there's still small differences yeah and so uh if if i were to take the the you know i guess you could grind the upper or the lower yeah receiver and you can make it fit but it's that sounds like stupid yeah especially when stuff are uh, you could get things There's... as inexpensive as they are right. right now yeah so i have like a it's kind so of if funny. you're buying a palmetto lower you should probably try to match, match it, it with, with a palmetto, a palmetto upper. upper yeah good and advice. that's that's one thing i'll probably be on the lookout for i have a barrel ready mm-hmm. and you know originally i was going to use this palmetto lower for one of my aero precision uppers oh and that didn't work out. Yeah. When I tried to snap it down, I was like, ah, oh, crap. So, huh. and it's a, the Gen 3. So I have a Gen 2 and a Gen 3 lower, and neither of them neither work of on them it. Yeah. Like the arrow. Hmm. So, interesting. anyways, and I, I figured since the Bear Creek stuff was on sale so cheap, like, yeah. there's a couple sales that. Did, have you tried a Bear Creek upper on the Palmetto lower? Yeah, it doesn't work. Oh, it doesn't work. Okay. The si- at least the side charger did not yeah. close. Huh. So huh. if I unscrew, you know how they have that thing on the top? Uh, the the back yeah. top yeah, that yeah. screws in with a little O-ring. Uh-huh. I, I the think, little plug? Yeah, the little plug thing. Uh-huh. If I remove that, I think it kind of fits. It's tight. Yeah. But then it looks like it's not at the right angle, and there's like a little... Right. It, it doesn't look right. Right. So... Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. But... Anyways, I figure, hey, they guarantee it. They guarantee the accuracy, I think, yeah. to be like one MOA or something. Yeah. That's going to be good enough for what I expect out of this rifle. Yeah. The 22-250. Well, I've, I've, built, I've built a handful of ARs from mostly Bear Creek stuff, yeah. and I've never had an issue with them. Yeah, and, you know, if worse came to worse, and, I mean, I could always warranty it if it shot really crappy. Right. But if I wanted to, I could throw in like a a better barrel from someone right. else and yeah whatever so that's it's always an option yeah and one thing to keep in mind i mean if you're wanting to build like a high precision long range 
rifle, don't buy it from the guys that make the cheap stuff. Yeah, don't don't ex- <laughs> don't buy the cheap stuff and ex and, and expect, expect it to perform. The high end. Yeah, yeah. When I mean when when I can get a complete AR-10 for like under 450. Yeah, that's how much I spent. Yeah, combining the two, in the yeah. upper and lower. Then that's ridiculous. It is ridiculous. Yeah, and so I don't know. Anyways, that's. One of my goals for the new year is going to be to shoot all these different guns and see how they do and, yeah. and maybe do a review, yeah. do a video review. Cool. But anyways, I got those. I did an order for something that would totally surprise you. Yeah? My my least favorite caliber, it's the 22. 22. Okay. I ended up doing an order from, uh, what's their names? They make the cheap revolvers, the Heritage. Heritage? Yeah. yeah. So okay, I yeah. had a heritage for a little while. Yeah, and so I ordered one that is their little. It's a revolver, it has a rail on top for like a red dot. Okay, and it has a threaded barrel. Oh god, I know. <laughs> it's, it's like I saw that. And I'm like, for this price, I have to try it. Wow, I have to, and I have to know. So it's not it's not a single action. It only. is single action. Oh god. Yes, it's a single action. Revolver. That is an absolute redheaded stepchild of a oh, gun. <laughs> indeed. And so I apologize to all the redheaded stepchildren who are listening. <laughs> yeah. So what I want to do, it's obvious, right? I want to see if you know because everyone always says you can't suppress revolvers very good because oh, of the barrel yeah. cylinder cap. Yeah, yeah. So I want to see how quiet is if it if a it little does twenty two single action. At all? Yeah. yeah. And so I'm going to put a silencer on it, a red dot, and I'm going to take it out and see how so how loud weird. it is and how much gas comes back, you know. Why would you the, build that? Why not is the real reason. No, why if you would you build that? Think the, about what they I'm do. I'm trying to think I'm trying to think the 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 designer, the engineer, whoever yeah. was behind designing that gun, what was their purpose okay. in mind? I'll tell you a couple of reasons Because they why. don't know who you are. Yeah. <laughs> One, silencers are becoming more popular. Right, but... So, okay. why not do it to their gun? Because... Two. Hold on. Okay. Two. What kinds of guns do they make? Well, All their guns are pretty much twenty two. Yeah. And they're based off that same design. They make... A 16-inch barrel revolver. Yeah. Right? Uh-huh. Same. It's the same revolver, you know. You just put a long barrel on yeah, it. Yeah, put a long barrel on it. I will say one of the side notes that I think is cool that they do is uh-huh. if you buy it in 22, uh-huh. you can, like, order a 22 mag yeah. cylinder, cylinder for, like, any other, I think, any of their guns. Yeah. And so that, that makes it a little bit more versatile. But yeah. for the for the little tactical revolver, you know. You got those two reasons. Silencers are more popular now, and but if it does indeed it, muffle it, I don't know that it twenty-two will. revolvers are kind of loud. Yeah, they and are. And so if you if it muffles it enough to be hearing safe, at least I'll be surprised if it is. But that's it'd be interesting. That's to a, see. I told Stan, and he was like kind of giddy. He want he he wants to do a, a range day with yeah. this one, and then I just had to do one of their. It's their carbine. Okay. It's, it's the revolver with that long barrel and a stock. And a stock. I, I actually like that setup. And, and so I got to try it out. Not necessarily in 22, but... Because some people say there's a lot of gas that comes back, you know, with that 22 because uh-huh. of that s- cylinder gap. And uh-huh. I wonder how you're supposed to hold it because... So... I think, I think they have a little watch, hook below the... If you watch Trigger. The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, there is a character who is a bounty hunter who's coming after a guy, and the guy's running from him, and he's got this roll bag on the side of his horse, and he pulls the cord, and this unrolls down the side of the horse, uh-huh. and it's got all these guns and all these components in it, and he pulls this big old revolver out, and he attaches a stock to the back of it, and just casually, while the guy's running from him, connects it all together... I believe he leans it up on the back side of the horse and shoots the guy down <laughs> at the end of the street with the thing. So, so you can watch that. I need to watch how... the documentary. Of yeah, the, the good, good, the, the bad, bad, and the, the ugly. ugly. Yeah, I'm pretty so. sure that's it's that one. Okay, I'll have it, to, I'll a, have to check a, it out. It's definitely an Eastwood Spaghetti Western. Okay. Clint Eastwood Spaghetti Western. All right, so, so that was, I, yeah, a good <laughs> deal. I, I was offered a good deal on these three guns. 
So and and then there's the final one was their lever action. So you got three three twenty twos. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Things, and I did not spend much. Things are I don't so, know what to think anymore. Well, here's my universe. What, here's what is here's upside what I'm gonna down say. right now. If they suck or I don't like them, I can always turn around and sell them. They're cheap enough that yeah, you know. Well, I can tell you, people always like to buy cheap guns. The one thing that I I had the the Rough Rider, their little twenty two. Yeah, the thing that I hated about it that I thought was just absolutely stupid, and I understand why it's there, but I still think it's stupid. The safety, yes, that is a weird safety, and I think that's stupid also. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, I mean, it is what it is. So Taurus has a revolver carbine similar to what uh-huh. you're the, the raging judge i think is what no that the, ra- no, it's it's the circuit the judge circuit judge or the rio grand or something like yeah, that it's, i would i would like one of those some i think that would be fun to shoot just because they're goofy yes i i would agree i you know shooting and it has a it has if you look at it there's a little shield yeah, shield yeah over the cylinder to protect your arm from that blast from getting scorched yeah. Actually, I think one of my friends has one of those. I wonder. If, I need to shoot it. Wonder if it's got that on both sides. So if you're left-handed, if you're right-handed, you're okay. If you're left-handed, you get burned. <laughs> yeah, I think it just goes under the whole thing, but maybe, maybe not. I don't know. I don't know either. Well, I haven't looked that closely at them. Yeah. But so, and then another thing, real quick, we're yeah. getting low on time. I found a, a good deal on some because you know when you have a silencer and if you get one of the non-direct threads like the quick attach right then you always run out of the the little muzzle devices right and they're expensive like yeah. stupid expensive like a 80 bucks 90 bucks oh wow yeah so i found this uh, like a bunch of them that were made by Ka valley k-a-w valley precision and they are the asr like mount huh and they are more of a I don't know, like a brake slash flash hider, but it doesn't have to be timed. Yeah. And so, I don't know. I I ordered a couple of these to try out. It's, I mean, so it, it's compatible with my Silencer Co. ASR suppressors. And they just bore them out in, you know, the the middle to, yeah. I think, 50 cal or something. Huh. So, uh, Interesting. You, you, it's not as much for, I don't know, it's kind of like just if, a, if you need an ASR device. Yeah. And you want something. And I got these on sale at Joe Bob Joe Outfitters. Bob Outfitter. or, yeah. And that was, uh, they were like 40 bucks each. Huh. So that's so a big savings. Yeah, yeah, it's half the price. So I got a couple in 5 eighths by 24 and a couple in, you know, half by 28. So uh, I'm going to try it out. I ordered a handful of uh, birdcage flash hiders. Oh, yeah? For fixtures that I'm making for the new showroom. Oh, fixtures? But I think... They were two ninety five. Two dollars and ninety five. Two dollars and ninety five cents. Did you get those at like Davidson or something? No, there's a like that's a. I think they're in California, but I think they only you have to have a dealer account to buy from. Okay, them, which I I do. Yeah, it's a it's called Tiger Rock. Huh. Some of their stuff is like stupid cheap, but I'm like, yeah, I looked at Davidson. They wanted ten bucks a piece for them, and I'm like, I need eight of these. I don't really want to spend eighty bucks <laughs> to, for what I'm doing. So, yeah. Yeah. But, and then they had, I bought a uh, a laser, uh, what do you call them? A laser, a boresight. Laser okay, boresight yeah. in 223. Seven bucks huh. from the same place. I, I had those in my cart. I'm like, well, I'm just going to, I have a habit now when I'm on any website and I'm placing an order, I always click on their clearance thing mm-hmm. just to see what's just in there. Just to see what's there. And and that was in there and they had a uh, a buffer plate that had uh sling attachments for like two or three bucks, you know. So hmm. I'm like I might want to borrow that two two three the laser bore or the yeah, bore cider. Okay. Yeah. So anyways. Yeah. And I've I've done like a ton more with guns but we'll sure. need to cover that in another <laughs> episode. But yeah. I'll just say a future episode, we're gonna talk shotguns. Oh, so, okay. Weird shotguns. Weird, sh- weirder Tur- than the... Turkish shotguns. Oh, so interesting. Yeah, and three different, three different actions. Okay, so pump action, semi-auto, 
and single shot <laughs> bolt action lever lever action awesome. <laughs> okay so that'll be for a future episode <laughs> okay but uh anyways yeah I'm, I'm super excited to see if that you know my three gun uh 22 order goes through or or not or that'll be it'll be fun to uh have a range day with that I, I, and then I, we'll have to have a shotgun range day too i would be interested in in checking those out i mean if anything because they're goofy they they are they're goofy and if if it's goofy and fun yeah it's it's a keeper right if it's goofy and awkward yeah and not really fun yeah then it gets the boot and yeah. then you know play with something else yep so I need to like try and get everything in before I start my net new. <laughs> <laughs> hey, the year's already started. <laughs> the real trick. <laughs> yeah. Anyways. Interesting. Cool. Okay. All right. Well, thanks for listening. Remember to send us your uh, gun acquisition stories. Yes. Don't have to be purchases. Although I don't want to hear you've had you've stolen off a dead guy. That's not only stealing from family. Uh-huh. Actually, I might want to hear one. If you got a story <laughs> stealing one off a dead guy, it would be interesting. We might not read it on the air, but... Yeah. Okay, until next time, stay safe, have fun. Take somebody shooting and be nice to people.